All right, here we go, you guys. This is not take one or two, <laughs> but three of Sandra and I getting together uh, to talk to you about simple hands-on math activities with free or uh, cheap materials. And I don't know if my video is slowing up some, my computer might be lagging, but I'm just gonna roll with it. <laughs> and and hopefully you guys can at least hear me and hear Sandra when she's on. So Sandra, thank you for joining me. Um, Absolutely. I know when I saw that you had signed up for the series and what you were going to be talking about, I thought, oh my gosh, that's genius because I rarely talk about math. Um, it's just not something that uh, I do a lot of. But can you tell us what blog you're from? And if you want to give us a little intro, the floor is all yours. All right. Thank you for having me here. Um, I blog at, and it is a tongue twister. I heard you trying to say it earlier and had to laugh because I get stuck on it all the time. Realworldlearners.com. Um, I chose real, the R-E-A-L, to stand for see if I can do it, relevant, engaging, authentic, and lifelong. So got stuck with a tongue twister there. Um, so yes, I blog about our homeschooling experiences. Um, I, okay, tiny bit of background. Um, I'm also a former public school teacher and currently a homeschooling parent. So I have a double major in math and English. So I've kind of got hot and cold sides of my brain going there. Um, and then I have a master's in teaching. So I have um, six years experience in the classroom. And my biggest takeaway from that and the in the very condensed form um is that as a homeschool parent i'm very determined to make sure that we're having real world i have to say it slow learning experiences so i don't want to fill my kids days with busy work or you know just doing something just to check it off so that's my main mission behind everything i do is just make sure what we're doing is real it it either has like relevance in the moment or it's interesting you know if it meets either of those criteria it's good enough for me so i have um okay and then just to fill out the background part um so i blog there and then i've been creating courses so i have kind of two parts to that i have a um virtual math for fun club that i've always been dreaming of doing it like actual math for fun club but i don't have the place to host it yet maybe someday i'll get a club started so for now i'm doing a virtual version and i have a lot of more plans for that so alongside that i have courses that i'm teaching math courses for kids okay so that's the background and then what i have for you guys today is a whole bucket full over here of um just things i picked up around the house that you probably have at home or you could get for free or cheap um just ways to do math with no prep you just kind of do it but sometimes you need ideas to get started i know for me this is my world so i have some ideas to share with you guys but if somebody did the same thing for me with science i would love just put those ideas in my hand so i can run with it do you you kind of need a starting point sometimes okay so you want me to jump in or do you yeah. have well i was gonna say i love the acronym for one <laughs> i love that acronym and i know it's going to speak right to the hearts of so many homeschooling moms who are kind of stressed out about the very thing that you said, well, I have to fill the days with X, Y, Z, and I have to make sure they're doing A, B, C. But really it's like, you know, after, because I was in the public school in the early childhood classroom for several years before training that in to become a stay at home homeschooling mom, so I totally get, you know, the classroom perspective, but it's shifting home and realizing, you know what, I don't want to school my children. I want to educate them and educating them is real. It's real life stuff. How is it relevant? So I'm just thrilled. I have my pen and paper to take notes because I told you me in math, you know, me in math and then. Um, we're not really friends, but I have a 12 year old and then there's this huge gap and then it goes five, three, one, and one on the way. <laughs> so I'm taking notes, Sandra. I'm gonna mute myself 
and you have at it with filling us up with all these activities. I'm ready. All right. I love it. It makes me feel so much better when somebody takes notes on me. I like that. All right. So I've got my bucket over here. And I'm going to start with my two favorites. So if anybody's watching and you know me, you know that my probably my favorite math things are a tin frame and an abacus. So this is my tin frame here, an egg carton with two cutoffs to make it 10, not 12, and then cotton balls, Legos, any object you want. Um, so I could talk forever. If you want to have me on another time, I could talk for hours about using tin frames. But the basic, basic thing is you can do anything with this. You can, um, in fact, I have my entire course is built around tin frames because you can go up from basic counting, recognizing numbers, all the way through multiplication and division. So here's the very basic idea. Um, if you have the number eight, I hope this is, video is coming through, okay? Uh, kids will practice. They can count it out, put things in, recognize. But look at, look at how beautiful. There's so much math in this. So they, kids can count out from one that there's eight things here. They'll recognize the more they do that eight is made up of five and three more. They'll recognize that there's two missing. So you have eight plus two equals 10 and all the fact families. Once you start adding, if you see eight is five and three, seven is five and two, I don't have that many, but you can picture it. Then you know, okay, there's two left. So the two from the seven go there. The five and the five make a 10. So you have 10 and five, which is 15. So it just builds this number sense intuitively as they play with it. Okay, so I seriously could talk all day about that, but I'll leave that. Anyways, an egg carton. You can do all the math you need with an egg carton. Some cotton balls. Okay, then this is fun. Once you get into bigger numbers, um, you use the same tin frame strategy about recognizing numbers with five and a few extra on an abacus. So my kids and I made an abacus from my cereal box, uh, pipe cleaners and beads. Um, pe people have done all kinds of things with this. So you could do Cheerios on a string, just tape those 10 pieces of string on a piece of paper. I mean, make it as easy as you want just to get the point across. But whatever you do, if you do Cheerios, use like the colored sugar kind, because you want um, those groups of five, because the groups of five are the key to everything that comes. So here's my brief lesson. Um, I'll try to keep one example. So if you were to do the same tin frame strategies on an abacus of any sort, we do have, we do have this one um, that we got from Ikea. You can get one from Amazon anywhere. But this That's is one we pretty have. much free. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice. If you have a real one to use, it's fun to play with that. Um, okay, so the thing about how tin frames can carry you all the way through multiplication and division, let's say you're doing six times three. So if you want six, you know that's a five and a one. And then you have, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do it as smoothly as possible, another six and another six. So what kids learn to see is that you have three groups of five. You just that's a 10 and a 5, so 15. And then three ones. So that's three more, 15, 16, 17, 18. So they kind of build that number sense out as they go. So that way you're doing one thing the entire time. You're not, you're not just, it's not like every single skill has a different set of rules. Okay, so I could go on with that. But let's jump gears entirely. So, um, and I know uh, Jaina, I believe, had asked the question earlier about if this works for older kids. So hopefully that kind of answers the question. You can see this can go from like pre-K up through, you know, as far as you want it to go up. Um, but here's, okay, jumping back to maybe pre-K and kindergarten skills. If you have one of these around your house, a tape measure, look what a tape measure is. It's a number line. <laughs> so you can do all kinds of things with this. You can skip count, two, four, you can mark off with stickers on every, counting by twos. You can overlap that with threes and see where the stickers match up and talk about, you know, how all kinds of math goes into that, twos and threes. Um, you That's can just genius. talk about counting. You can, of course, talk about the measurement aspect of it, how centimeters compare to inches. Um, go around measuring things, do guesstimations on how big things are. Um, but yeah, I love that. When I first realized, hey, we have a number line just built in right here. 
<laughs> so yeah, there's a lot you could do with that. Oh, um, I love that. Yes. Isn't that My great? Kids it's like, have a, yeah. They'd have a blast. And I don't have as many measuring tapes as I have children, but we have rulers. Yeah, and exactly. so maybe the older kiddos can use the measuring tape and my younger kiddos can actually use the root. Ah, Sandra, exactly. Girl, and you're then saving so many doing, lives right now. Yeah, don't spend money. Don't spend money. Um, you can do the addition thing, you know, a lot of times. I mean, I, I prefer to stick with one method. So I love doing addition just always with pin frames. But if you want to do addition on a number line, then you just mark off. So you want to do two plus three. So you mark off two and then have the kids touch the numbers as they move up three jumps and then I'm all about putting stickers on things. So mark it with stickers or anything you want. Okay. Stop me at any point because I have like a whole list of things, but I know you wanted to keep this short. So you just tell me. No, I'm I mean, here. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed. Like keep going because I'm like, okay, I have things that we can, <laughs> new things. They're exactly. Exactly. Okay, so I had my uh, six-year-old bring me all his coins. So this is all his money in the whole world. <laughs> he doesn't quite understand the concept of money yet. But the great thing about money is just, I don't even like the idea of using play money because first of all, paying real money for play money just blows my mind. I don't get that. But second of all, with real money, there's so many things you can do. And one thing is, I'll try to describe this. I wish I had a visual here, but um, Okay, so take like a handful of coins and just have kids play with them, touch them, um, and then make a Venn diagram and put a few categories in it. So like silver, copper, um, dates of things, faces versus, you know, different, just any attributes that are on coins in general. And then you're learning about Venn diagrams and categorizing and noticing details. So as they're putting the different coins in the different categories, what they're doing is they're getting really familiar with the shapes of different things because that's the thing that throws kids is they have to learn that dimes are a certain shape so they can recognize it, you know, different money amount. So even before you get into the math, like a dime is worth 10 and a nickel is worth five, just let them play around with it and see different features of what the coins are. And that lays a good foundation for understanding it. Um, and then taking it up for like older kids, you can set up a little store, have them make little products and put price tags on it and then give each of them a small allowance, play money, you know, real money, but play. And then they go around and spend money at each other's stores. You can have them give change. You can just scale it up or down depending on your kids. So Yes, I love that real life approach. I know it's, we, we pay our kids, um, our five and three year olds can actually do chores for like, this might sound bad, but like a quarter, <laughs> you know, just a little, little change. And when they get enough money to get something from the store, we have them take their money pouch. And I'm the mom that's apologizing to the people behind us. Like, I'm sorry, they're actually paying for it. My husband's like, who cares? They're learning. And I'm like, well, baby, you know, it's just there's 15 people behind us now because we're letting our five year old Found out two dollars awesome. but I love the how you're um, confirming that for me who's like the mom that's like are you sure this is but yes real life <laughs> real money and real experiences yes, yes. and he gets it <laughs> he gets it hands down Absolutely. <laughs> exactly you tell me if you need to go take care of that because I understand I, I know that sounds <laughs> um there's one thing, oh, it's back here. So I think money actually transitions well into time. So I pulled our clock off the wall here <laughs> because if you can talk about, okay, money, you have to count nickels by five. You can even, you can do all of this. You can do the tape measure, counting off by fives and then counting by tens and then 25 and then move into money, count by those. And then you see all of the same things are here, counting by fives, tens, et cetera. Um, and the other thing is if you have a clock like this with Roman numerals, there's so much math hidden in the Roman numerals. So, and it matches the 10 frame idea. So five is a V, four is one less than a five, or, okay, six is a five and one more, nine is 10 minus one, so it's one take away 10. Okay, anyways, a lot of math going into a clock. So besides the obvious idea of using it to tell time which is great you can put little stickers on the clock and say 
you know, we have breakfast at this time and learn to read the time, time elapsed, lots of stuff. But just kind of getting in there, learning how to count by fives and tens, thirties, sixties. You know what's a really cool idea that you might be able to do with older kids? I don't know what age to put on it, but kind of get in there and talk about base 10 system and how our world is built on base 10 because we have 10 fingers. So at some point, somebody just decided we're doing everything on base 10, but it's arbitrary. So clocks are not base 10, clocks are base 60. So everything's in units of 60 and then it starts over after the 60. So you can kind of, if you teach this idea to kids who are too young, it kind of like trips them up, they either can't get it or it makes them question everything they've ever learned. <laughs> like, wait, what is what are numbers? But it's fun to explore like ideas like that that are about math, but are a little more philosophical. Um, so, okay, that's a brief introduction to some math you can do with time. Um, I love it. And then, <laughs> and then we made our little chart here. This might be the last one I'll share with you today, but um, so you can do all kinds of things with graphs with like no prep, no props. That's one of my big things, no prep and no props. Like just get in there and do it and it'll be real. Okay, so we took a little, uh, if you can, is that too far away or can you see it? Okay, so we took a little interview of our family members here, vanilla, chocolate, mint, Oreo, cookie dough. So you get the, um, you can have kids design their own interview, go around, ask people questions, take notes on it, um, turn it into data. So, or take that data, turn it into graphs. So here we have our bar graph. We turn the bar graph into a circle graph. That way on this, and then you kind of compare the different graphs. On a circle graph, you can easily tell that that's 50%. You wouldn't necessarily know just by glancing at the bar graph that it's 50%. Um, so you talk about the different benefits of drawing the graph certain ways. You can write up reports. There's all kinds of extensions you can do with it to make it work for all kinds of ages. Um, so let me look really quick. Oh, okay, another, maybe the last thing here. Um, one thing that we love doing is going out on nature walks, but nature math walks, and looking for, one of our recent things was um, looking for fractals and tessellations all around us. So my four-year-old actually got into the fractal one a lot, and he has, like, we'd been talking about it and kind of studying it, and then as soon as he got outside, he looked down at his feet, he's like, oh, there's a fractal and it was the cracks in the pavement that were kind of like splitting off and it was more or less the repeating pattern as it got smaller and smaller and spread out so there's another idea and then we found tessellations and all the bricks on the houses um yeah okay so i just threw like a hundred ideas at you <laughs> i love that <laughs> so many ideas and i know when people watch this they're going to be like okay so where can i join her tribe like where is her neck of internet land <laughs> so i can get in there because i know you mentioned you have a group is it a facebook yeah. group facebook group it's our math for fun club okay so tell us all the ways to connect with you because i'm if, if you know i can get in that group but please add me <laughs> but right. let us know about your group um your website link and then if you have any um new products or anything that you want to make a plug for go ahead sandra oh. i love it you're awesome. Thank you. Um, well, my biggest thing, you can probably tell from this, is my math courses. And I have two lines of things. I did a math art class where we did this exploring fractals, tessellations, Fibonacci, the golden ratio um, in nature, in art, making our own. That was so much fun. So that was kind of in the Math for Fun Club. I did, um, my big idea is to do one class, maybe a week or every other week for free in the club. So just get people joining, engaged, come to the club sessions, just like you would with a real club. Um, and then I package those together, make them a little more polished and create courses out of it. So I have one course complete, but I have already so many ideas to do an extension of the math art course. And then I've um, been working for about a year on another course series that I just finished on developing number sense using 10 frames and an abacus. So that you've heard me talk about, um, I'm so excited. I'm loving that and people are just loving seeing how numbers make sense. That's like my biggest thing is numbers make sense. You can get hands on and do those experiences. So we have a, the whole thing is built around hands on activities, games. I teach video lessons. We have quizzes. Um, but not a lot on the worksheet. I don't 
do that much on skill and drill. I know there's 100,000 resources you can get for that, but I made a lot of unique games and just ways to get kids practicing in interactive ways. So they don't really know they're doing math. That's kind of the stealth learning opportunities there. Um, yeah, so that is mathmakesense.teachable.com, but there's a little hyphen in between the words. Is it, will you be able to leave links if I? Yeah, I was going to tell you that okay. I'm going to grab all your links and make sure okay. I get it in the description of the video. Perfect. Perfect. And then um, the Facebook group is also facebook.com group math makes sense. But yeah, I'll share the links with you. And Perfect. yeah, I'd love to have anybody come over and join the party. Um, and it's yes. been so much fun. Look, math, is, <laughs> math is about to be incredible in this household, thanks to you. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Well, I thank you so much, Sandra, for joining me for this little series of learning in the oh, early years, but you definitely showed us how learning in the early years can carry all the way through absolutely. Um, in the area of math. So thank you so much. I'm going to get this video out finally. All right. All right. <laughs> Facebook was boo -boo, but you know what? Uh, we got it out though. We made it work. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I'll be talking to you after this. Okay. Thank right. you for having me here. You're welcome.